Hi, and welcome to Meetings in Math. You are here for writing equations using the slope-intercept form. We're going to explain how to use a graph or two points to write the equation of a line in slope-intercept form today. Today, you're going to need a pen or a pencil. A highlighter might be helpful. And your Jaguar jots on 4.6, page 59. Make sure that you're there before we get started and bring your determination and your perseverance to stick with this lesson until the very end. So let's go ahead and get started. Slope intercept form actually tells you what it is that you are looking at. The slope, which is M, and the intercept, which is B. Slope intercept form is in the form Z equation Y equals MX plus B. And if you recall from earlier lessons, M represents the slope and B represents the Y intercept. And the X and the Y are just points on the graph. And so they always stay X and Y. So if we look at our very first graph that we have here, we can see that it's going through certain points that we want to draw attention to. For example, this point right here. That point is on the y-intercept, so it's very easy to tell what it is. That is the point 0, negative 2. And the second point is always our b. So we can right off the bat say that b is equal to 2. And then we want to look at our slope. Our slope tells us the direction that the graph is going. We can tell that this graph is going downhill if we go back to our slope dude idea. If I was to draw right here, a little guy standing, he would be skiing downhill. And so what we do is we wanna look at what does it take to go from one point to the next. And so I just need to find some points that I can see that are on the graph. They might not necessarily be the most straightforward points from one to the next. I might have to reduce my fraction. It doesn't really matter, just so long as I can find one point to the next. And so immediately the first point I find is this one right here. And so I'm going to figure out what does it take to go from this point to that point. And so I'm just going to count how far did it take to go down. And so that was one, two, three, so negative three, and to go over was one, two, three, four. And so if we remember, slope is delta y over delta x. So our delta y is how much you go up and down, and our delta x is how much you go over. So our delta y, we can see is negative three, and our delta x was four. This fraction does not need to be reduced, and so we are going to put it right there to help us figure this out with our fraction or our negative in the middle, so negative three fourths. Now that we have those, we can substitute it into our slope intercept form equation, which is y equals mx plus b. y is never replaced and b and x is never replaced unless we need to use it to help us find other variables. So y equals 3 fourths, mm, let's use purple. y equals negative 3 fourths, so make sure we get that negative in there. So negative, I need to use a tiny bit of white out to make some room. Negative 3 fourths x, and then our b is the 2. This is a little messy. This is kind of like I get up in the morning and I haven't done my hair, I need to brush my hair, brush my teeth. And so now I'm going to say it get rid of those parentheses. So y equals a negative 3 fourths x2. And that is my answer. So that is like the quick, easy, how do we do these problems? So now let's look at it where I haven't filled in some things for you. And how do we do these problems? So the very, very first thing that you do is you write down the slope intercept form. y equals mx plus b. And then you write down the things that you need to replace, which are the m's and the b's. And then you can go find m and b in any order that you want. It doesn't really matter. So the b is always the easiest to find because it's on the y-intercept. And here it is right here. And it's up 1, 2, 3. So b is 3. Oh, I made a mistake here. b is not 2. b is negative 2. That's a negative 2, which makes this a negative 2. And adding a negative is subtraction. I need to slow down. 
Okay, back to this one. It's okay if we make mistakes. That's what erasers and whiteout is for. It's, it's finding them and making them and correcting them that matters. Okay, this one. So it's up three. So this is three. And now we have to find our slope. So I just need to go find another point. So I have one here and I have one here. And it doesn't matter which one I use. It really doesn't. So I'm going to use this one. So I went over one, two, three, four. Do you see it? One, two, three, four. So my delta X is four. See how it didn't matter which way I went, but I know X's go on the bottom. And then I went up one. If I was standing here, I know I'm going uphill, so I know it's a positive one fourth. So I'm putting those into that. So the Y stays, the M has to change, and the B has to change. The M changes to one fourth. The B changes to a three. Let's clean that up. Let's get it rid of the parentheses. Anything else that doesn't look quite right. And we get Y equals one fourth X plus three. So when we're doing it from graphs, it's very straightforward. We're counting. We're just looking at it and we're saying, where is that? What is that? Looking at that Y line and then how did I move to get to new points? Do you see that if I had done this right here, I would have gone over four, one, two, three, four, in the same way, and up one. This one right here, um, no, yeah, I do, right there. I would have gone down three, one, two, three, and over four, one, two, three, four, and look at that, I end up right on another point. Let's go ahead and turn the page. So what happens when we're given two points? Well, when we're given two points, it's not as pretty. We do have to remember that the y-intercept is zero B. In fact, let's write that down, that the y-intercept is zero B. So if I can find something that's zero and a number, I had the y-intercept, and so it's pretty straightforward. And then I have to find the slope. So finding the slope, I know how to do. We've been working on that. We know that to find the slope, it is delta y over delta x. And so I take my two points, take that one first, and I go y's over x's, and then I subtract, and then I take my next point, and I go y's over x's. And so negative one minus negative one is really negative one plus one. Zero minus four is really negative four. So this is really zero divided by negative four, which is zero. That's where this came from. So when you're given two points, you are going to have to go find your slope. But once you have that, it goes right back to what we did before. So now y equals m x plus b. I know what m is. m is zero. I know what b is. b is right here, negative one. And now I clean this up. What is zero times x? Zero times x is zero. So that just goes away. So zero times x is zero. Zero plus a negative one is just, I'm out of room, let's come over here. Zero equals negative one. This is a nice horizontal line. So let's look at another one. Again, what does m equal? What does b equal? And we're putting that into y equals mx plus b. So you're setting them all up the exact same way Please take the time to set it up this way because it gives you your roadmap rather than you going, I don't know what to do next. You do. Now you know you have to go find M and B. And you know that B is a zero number. I have a zero number right there. So we have B. So now all we have to do is find M. But you know how to do that because we've been working on it for a really long time. Delta Y over Delta X. So now we have five over zero and we have two over three. So five minus two is three. Zero minus three is a negative three, so our slope is negative one. So now we put that right here, and now we substitute. So y equals m x plus b. Well, m is negative one, and b is five. This one right here, we don't write negative one. We write negative x. So negative x plus five. That's how you do writing equations in slope-intercept form. So let's write our summary today. 
we need two things. What are the two things we need? We need slope and y-intercept. So two things are needed to write an equation in slope-intercept form. You can find those both on a blank or when given to blank. For a line that has been graphed in a coordinate plane, you can write the equation by. When given two points, you can write the equation by. All right, so right here, you can find those both on a coordinate plane or when given two points. What I want you to do tonight is I want you to write down how we did this. How did we do it on a coordinate plane and how did we get do it given two points? Thank you so much for showing up. And remember, be nice to each other because we all need some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.